Welcome to the CSN channel. Our topic for today is how fatty liver is developed. My name is Abuzar Habibinia. I have an MD degree and I am the director of the Canadian Academy of Sport Nutrition. Subscribe to the CSN channel on YouTube to enjoy the information that we share on a weekly basis about medicine, weight loss, fitness, and sport nutrition. Okay, today I'm going to talk about how fatty liver is developed. Basically, we are going to talk about the mechanisms, reasons, and potential causes of fatty liver. Unfortunately, fatty liver is on the rise globally. Fatty liver can be seen at any ages, but mostly we see ages between 40 to 60 years old. And about 10% of children around the globe, they have fatty liver. Usually, fatty liver has no specific symptoms. However, sometimes uh, the patients may complain of you know, abdominal discomfort, fatigue, tiredness, but most of the time it is diagnosed uh, by a, you know, a regular checkup by your uh, doctors. In fatty liver, we have accumulation of fat in the liver. Usually, there is a small percentage of fat in the liver, one to two percent. And if more than five percent of your liver has been occupied by fat, we're gonna call them fatty liver. And the fat that, that is going basically uh, to be accumulated in the liver, in fatty liver, is actually triglyceride. It is the same fat that you have around your waistline. It is the same fat that is making your uh, love handles. So the fat uh, that is going to accumulate in fatty liver in the liver is triglyceride. There are two mechanisms uh, for that. Number one, the production of triglyceride by the liver has been increased. The liver is producing more. Or the production of triglyceride by the liver is with a normal range but the delivery of triglyceride uh, to the outside has been affected. So either we have increased production of triglyceride in the liver or we have decreased delivery of triglyceride to the outside. Either way, you're going to develop basically fatty liver. And let's review the 16 potential causes and risk factors for fatty liver. I have put them, uh, all of them on the board for you and uh, there were lots of information I wanted to put on the board but I couldn't and I'm sure you can see the in the description of the video below. Let's go one by one. Number one, nutrition related. Probably this is uh, one of the common uh, reasons of fatty liver around the globe and here are the important uh, nutrition related causes of fatty liver starvation protein deficiency carnitine deficiency deficiency of vitamins B group especially uh, vitamins B8 which is called inositol and vitamin B18 which is called choline rapid weight loss this one we have discussed in the past if you lose weight very quickly, rapidly, you may develop uh, fatty liver. And here was the basic definition for rapid weight loss. If you lose 5% of your body weight in a month, we call them rapid weight loss. If you lose more than 3 pounds in a week, we're going to call them rapid weight loss. And TPN, total parenteral nutrition. Usually TPN is done in hospitals by doctors. In TPN, TPN is a sort of, uh, let's say, is a method of feeding that is going to bypass your GI system. In TPN, all nutrients that someone needs, vitamins, minerals, fats, amino acids, will be given intravenously. So the nutrition-related uh, causes of uh, fatty liver are uh, starvation, protein deficiency, carnitine deficiency, uh, vitamin B group deficiency, especially B8 and B18, and rapid weight loss and TPN. Number two, alcohol. Number three, obesity, especially I have put in here sentry 
petal. If you have uh, basically if you are obese and uh, basically your obesity comes from mostly visceral fat. See, you can see uh, obesity is going to lead to fatty liver and fatty liver can lead to obesity. We have over the vicious cycle. Number four, diabetes. And if you have, if you have developed insulin resistance for any reasons, actually this is very common these days. We see lots of people with insulin resistance. Uh, definitely I'm going to read you about insulin resistance in the future. Hepatitis C, pregnancy. Some women, they develop fatty liver when they get pregnant. Obesity surgeries. I'm going to definitely video about obesity surgeries in the future. We have at least seven types of surgeries that are done basically to help people uh, lose weight. So if you do uh, any of those obesity surgeries, especially uh, the one that includes gastric bypass, you may develop fatty liver. Inflammatory bowel diseases, uh, we have uh, two of them, uh, ulcerative colitis and Crohn diseases, especially people with uh, Crohn disease, they are at risk to develop fatty liver. Number nine, Wilson disease. It's a metabolic uh, disorder that the body uh, is going to have too much copper. Too much copper in the body is going to sit in the liver, in the eyes, and even in the nervous system. Number 10, there is a disease, it's called Wollman's disease. In this disease, there is an enzyme which is important for metabolism of fat is missing. Number 11, metabolic errors. There are quite few of them, but here are the four common metabolic errors that could lead to developing fatty liver. Glycogen storage diseases. Tyrosinemia, it's a metabolic uh, disorder that uh, the amino acid tyrosine in the blood is going to go up. Galactosemia, another metabolic disorder in which basically the, the sugar galactose in the blood is going to go up. And homocysteinuria, another metabolic disorder in which we're going to have uh, the amino acid homocysteine in urine. Number uh, 12. Ray syndrome. Douglas Ray was an Australian pathologist who described the disease back to 1963. Usually, Ray syndrome in medicine is seen among children when especially they are recovering from flu, chicken pox, or common cold. And in medicine, we know there is a strong relationship between consuming aspirin and uh, Ray syndrome and one of the symptoms of Ray syndrome is definitely fatty liver. That's why these days you don't see doctors basically to prescribe a baby aspirin to children. Number 13, toxins. There are lots of toxins, environmental toxins that could lead to developing uh, fatty liver. One of them I have mentioned, I put in here for you. Uh, hypoglycine A. Hypoglycine A is a sort of amino acid that can be found in the nature in the fruits of a tree called Aki tree. Number 14, metals, antimony, barium salts, uranium compounds. If you have uh, basically long-term exposures to those uh, metals, you could develop fatty liver. Number uh, 15, drugs and medications. There is a long list of medications that could lead to developing fatty liver. And here are the common medications uh, that fatty liver is one of their basically side effects. Asparaginase, a chemo drug. Azacitidine, another chemo drug. Alloporinol, a medication for gout. Amiodarone, a medication for irregular heartbeats. Baleomycin, another chemo drug. Corticosteroids, actually corticosteroids probably are among 
uh, common medications prescribed by medical doctors worldwide. Corticosteroids are prescribed for so many reasons, from asthma to cancers, from allergies to autoimmune diseases. Estrogens, birth control pills, doxycycline. Doxycycline is a famous antibiotic that usually is prescribed for people with acne. Uh, another medication would be hydralazine, a medication for high blood pressure, methotrexate, a nasty uh, medication that is prescribed to people with autoimmune diseases and even in cancers. Tamoxifen, a medication uh, that is prescribed for people uh, with breast cancer. Tetracycline, especially if it's given high dose intravenously. Valproic acid, a common medication that is prescribed uh, you know, uh, to people with uh, epilepsy and seizure. And Zidovudin, a medication for AIDS and uh, for people with HIV positive. And number 16, race and ethnicity. Definitely race and ethnicity, they play an important role in developing fatty liver. For example, we know that fatty liver is low among African Americans, but it is very high among Americans of Hispanic ancestry. Okay, today we discussed the mechanisms, reasons, and potential causes and risk factors of developing fatty liver. And I really hope that you learn something interesting today because we make science easy to understand. Now you know. Next week, I'm going to talk how you can fix fatty liver and how hopefully you could reverse it as much as possible. To support us, you can share, like, or comment on this video. Until next time, stay safe, stay connected.